So welcome to the first episode of Weekend Musings. I am super excited to host you guys. So uh, for the people who have not seen my first welcome video, uh, my name is Ashwara Srinivasan. I am a data scientist in IBM's Data Science Elite team. I am also a huge advocate of open source technology and work with Scikit-Learn and PyTorch Lightning. So in the first episode, as I mentioned, I would be touching on three uh, tech topics. These are uh, AI technologies, in um, industries, in research, and uh, applied in different space. So um, without much ado, let's jump on to topic one. So this is one of my favorite topics and probably that's why it's topic one. So this is uh, OpenAI's uh, new fancy machine learning uh, algorithm called DAL-E. And um, it is a image recognition or like a computer vision technology where they have built a model and um, they have trained it on um, like millions and millions of images for that matter uh, not might be more than millions of images for that matter it is a 12 billion parameter uh, version of gpt3 so what happens in this uh, technology is that whenever you give it a text prompt like whenever you give it a, a text description of, of what kind of image you want it to generate it would try to uh, like layer wise attach and uh, even create new images or sketches or drawings based on the text which you have entered into it. So one of the examples which you see on the screen right now is an avocado chair. So if you see like it's not just a distorted image of an avocado and like some uh, trimming and cropping done with a picture of a uh, picture of a chair but it's it's like really nicely curated and it actually feels like an interior designer like uh, designed the avocado chair right so this is the power of um, the kind of ai technologies that we can develop right now and it's it's absolutely fascinating on how open ai has developed this tool and it just blows up your mind on how machine learning was considered to be this like boring topic which was only around predictive analytics which could only be applied in um, like serious technology uh, industries or like serious industries but we can do so much of creative uh, like research and like so much of innovation with these technologies right like uh, I was just like trying out these uh, couple of examples on their website so if you go onto the website of DAL-E uh, on, on OpenAI you can actually like select different uh, text prompts and customize your own kind of image which you want to see and i was just like experimenting on like an elephant with a tutu watching a movie or a panda wearing headphones and like walking a dog etc so these are like really fascinating diagrams which came up and it didn't seem like uh, like the images have been cropped and altered together so it comes up with like say 20 or 30 different images uh, as an output and it seems as if you gave this text prompt to an artist and he has literally drawn these diagrams. These are like really realistic and um, uh, you know like a uh, very creative way of portraying um, portraying these texts and I was like literally blown away when I saw this and I could like not think of how is it possible like that uh, AI is able to be so creative like just based on these texts it's being so creative and it's not just that the different images produced are similar to each other, they are very different. Like you would see an elephant sitting on a couch, uh, wearing a tutu, watching TV, or it could be standing next to a TV, watching it, or it could be like uh, probably in another corner of the room doing something else, wearing a tutu and watching a movie. So there's like so many wide range of uh, innovation that I could see in, in this algorithm. And I was, I was like, don't worry, you should definitely give it a try. And, uh, go to the website, explore your own kind of creative examples and let me know how you like them. So topic two for today is uh, Facebook's new summarization algorithm called TLER. So when it comes to news summarization or text summarization, there are majorly two basic uh, differences, like two different uh, modules of how you can do it. One is called an extractive summarization, the other is an abstractive summarization. Uh, what happens in an extractive summarization is you are trying to summarize the text which you have using snippets of the text itself. You're like pulling out some sentences and phrases from the text itself and creating a summary of that text. 
whereas an abstract of summarization is where the machine learning model is generating sentences on its own based on syntactic syntactics and grammar and uh, the right uh, aspect of what is being portrayed in the text so both of them are equally challenging and um, equally reflect requires really really uh, good research and uh, good example and good data for the model to be trained correctly so what facebook is doing right now in this space is as we know like news is something which is uh, could be like really long and when you see like huge texts of news people end up skimming the news and not understand the entire picture of what's happening in the story and they either misunderstand what's being written in the news or they only uh capture certain aspects of what's portrayed in the news they only understand like one side of the story of what's what's written in the news so this could actually be really dangerous because what people understand out of these news could uh trigger them in different ways so facebook is trying to build this new summarization application which are uh, which would be uh summarizing your news text in a very uh intelligent way it would not be summarizing it so much that it loses any context it or it loses any uh, varied aspects of the story whereas it would be summarizing it enough so that people are able to read the entire thing and not just skim through it so this is like going to be a really interesting experiment and why i call it an experiment because uh, like facebook has billions of users and we have seen in the past that facebook has been one of the major sources of spread of misinformation and um doing uh, an algorithm like this is really great uh, in one aspect because like this would really help people to understand the information better digest it better but i just did better and understand the different sides of the story but on the other hand it could also be looked at in a critical standpoint and seen that if it did not work the way they thought it would it could be another huge drawback because it could be another source of spreading of misinformation people would need read the summarized news snippets and god knows what they'll understand right so i am like pretty uh, fascinated and i am looking forward to see um, how it's going to turn out to be and uh, yeah i would really love to have your um, your thoughts on that and if you have any other um, like latest um, like updates on this or um, like just like your thoughts okay so moving on to the topic 3 so this is again like a really fascinating thing because while i was researching for this topic i got to know like really interesting things and this topic is basically fantasy to reality how ai has the impact on the world so um i got to know that the first movie which was presenting ai technology was a german expressionist movie which was uh, which was shot in 1927 yes that old it's 1927 and it was called metropolis so the, they were trying to portray that there's a professor and he's trying to build a humanoid robot called maria and she's been um, like built with human intelligence uh and it's exactly like how we are trying to build humanoid robots right now and this was something which they thought of in 1927 that's pretty amazing and the first american movie uh, about having ai in real world was a movie called gort it was uh, in 1951 and what they had done is like they had another like humanoid robot who was who was the main character of the movie and he was trying to save the world using all his uh, powers and he was undeniably a really friendly robot and he had a lot of empathy and expression and um feelings like unlike the kind of ai we actually have have right now So if you see like in all these movies like uh, even in Star Wars you see these like uh, C3PO or R2D2 they have emotions they have um, they have so much better understanding of natural language or uh, or like things which they are dealing with it seems like these are like really polished technology but what we see in the current world is that ai is still growing right we don't have that finished product as we see in the movies we don't have flying cars uh not even close to that right we are still experimenting with driverless cars for that matter so when we see that bridge 
like that gap between fantasy to reality it is going to take a while and uh, it is of it is an obvious reason that we are taking that time for us to evaluate and reevaluate the technologies because we want to make sure that when these uh, ai technologies are being integrated in different industries they don't have any ill effect they don't have any side effect they don't have any um, like um any impact on how humans are uh, operating right now and uh, like one of the things which we saw recently or like is we, which we're still seeing is data privacy issues right with ai technology there's a lot of data privacy issues and people are trying to tackle with these challenges so of course these things are going to come up and we are going to see such um like uh, the side effects of ai and that's what which we need to combat and make sure uh, we are good in all aspects before adopting it completely in our in our real world uh, lives so um, that's it for today uh, i really hope you enjoyed the weekend musings episode 1 please do leave your comments below i would want to uh, hear from you guys on what you thought about the three topics today if you would like me to talk about certain topics in the next week's episode um till then take care see ya